Welcome to Trending Global. I'm your host, Astley. Okay, so what's the topic? Today we're going to discuss about the recent lifting of the ban on the three countries which left the ECOWAS by ECOWAS. Do you know which countries they are? Yeah, Niger, Burkina Faso and Mali. Okay, so what happened? Why did those three countries leave ECOWAS? And the what is ECOWAS? ECOWAS is an economic integration body for the West African countries. I believe it consists of 15 countries in West Africa. It used to consist of 15 countries. Yeah, minus the ones who left. So the, the three countries were, uh, as sanctions were placed on them because they overthrew their, their governments and they are led by military. Uh, of course, in ECOWAS, uh, they've identified that um, they're against coups and any destabilization for forces, right? Yeah. So in reality, these countries did break their contract of being uh, inside ECOWAS, right? Yeah, they did break the contract because it's a requirement to not be led by a military government being ECOWAS. Right. So if that's the case, then do you agree with ECOWAS for putting sanctions on these countries for trying to end post-colonialism of France? I think they should not have put sanctions on them because they were trying to force them to to immediately turn into a democratic government transition. I believe it was partly because ECOWAS is mainly pro-Western and they were being funded by France and stuff. They should have done dialogue more than just you know, putting a lot of sanctions on the countries. I see, I see. Because um, I, I think the, the ECOWAS could have forced these countries to have uh, an, a democratic process soon, like by saying, okay, give us three years, within three years we want a civilian government. Whether it's the current president there being elected, it doesn't matter, but th we need to re-establish civilian control. They could have gone through a process with uh, the three junta countries, right? Yeah, they could have helped them come up with a process, support them, and be involved in dialogue with them. But they chose to just impose a lot of sanctions on them. So that angered the three countries and they chose to withdraw. And they formed, I believe it's called an Alliance of Sahel region for the three countries block. Yeah, they formed their own version of ECOWAS for Sahelian countries. Yeah. And they've stated that they want nothing to do with um, ECOWAS, as you stated, right? They, fought, they wrote a formal withdrawal um, paper, sent it to them. And now they even have talks with Morocco who have agreed to at least have talks with them uh, considering uh, having access to the ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, for example, uh, to Morocco. So it's not as if that these countries can survive, but you would ask yourself, why would three landlord countries leave an economic uh, union where they actually rely on ECOWAS countries like Nigeria. I mean, Nigeria gets everything through Nigeria, through the northern states of um, Nigeria. Yeah, I believe they were, it was, they were annoyed with them for the sanctions they imposed on them. So they chose to just withdraw. Yeah, this is interesting. So do you think that ECOWAS is only um, removing the sanctions and embargoes and lifting the air bans um, from those three countries because they're afraid that this will lead to a destabilization of ECOWAS. Other countries like Guinea, in fact, even Guinea has, uh, uh, ECOWAS has lifted the sanctions on Guinea as well. Guinea also had a, a coup. However, Guinea did not have it because of anti-French sentiments. That was a very different thing. In fact, the, the coup leaders were actually cousins to the current uh, regime or to the post regime. So that one is more of a power grab. That's why they're typically not, you know, involved with this whole um, Sahelian countries. So do you think ECOWAS is just afraid of losing power overall? So they lifted these bans and sanctions, even on Guinea. Remember, Guinea was not even like someone you could claim they were fighting for pan-Africanism or end of French um, post-colonialism. That is just a simple power grab. Go ahead. Yeah, I believe they don't want uh, the coup to spread all over ECOWAS and in many other countries. That's why they're lifting the ban, because they still want to have intelligence, information from other countries to know what's going on. I believe so. They think it's going to spark a lot of, a lot of coup in other countries and destabilization too, I think so. And also, they, I believe they, 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 they did say 
it's on basis of humanitarian ground too because of you know the, the three countries who left are the poor among the poorest right mm -hmm. yeah so there are some things that are supposed to reach them including aid a lot of stuff and and given the sanctions they already imposed a lot of people are already suffering and the poverty level are short too so maybe they are in it for the humanitarian grounds but also they are afraid for of the stabilization of the whole region too now one of the reasons um that people with uh, within ECOWAS were saying they lifted this ban and sanctions was actually due to ramadan right yeah ramadan is which month next month i believe it's in one month or next month? next month i believe right yeah so uh, a lot of people are saying that is actually the northern nigerians because nigeria is um, uh, is actually a half muslim half christian country the south is typically christians and the north and central is islamic right so if you look at the yorubas some of them 30 percent are muslims the rest are christians and then if you go in more north fulani and uh, the full the houses these are Muslims and Niger is actually just house of people just like in Nigeria. So some people claim that actually, and it's not a claim, this is true. The, the Muslims put pressure on ECOWAS saying this is the month of Ramadan. We have to be able to move freely in order to communicate with our Muslim brothers in the Sahel and also perhaps go into uh, Hajj in Mecca. Or not Hajj, sorry, but to go into um, uh, Saudi Arabia to obviously to, yeah, I don't know if there's Hajj during Ramadan, but to go there and celebrate it in, in Saudi, right? So how powerful do you think the Muslims were in lifting these bans? Maybe a little bit, they had influence, but I believe that the ECOWAS did not ex expect the countries to just withdraw. So I think they're trying to, they didn't expect them to withdraw from ECOWAS completely. So I think they're trying to appease them in a way so that they could come back to the to the body to the ECOWAS body too that makes sense yeah so ECOWAS have had a long time and we're going to do this in another video but the echo right the echo is a currency that was supposed to be created but it never was um with these three countries leaving ECOWAS um first of all do you think they will return or no I believe they will return because it's easier for for them to integrate back into ECOWAS then trying to build a relationship with Morocco and have access to their port. So I believe they will return. Yeah, because the main issue is the sanctions because yeah, the main, it's just the sanctions. If it's lifted and negotiations is done well, I believe they are going to return. Okay. Now why do you think Africans are using um European and Western tactics of sanctioning each other? Uh, and again, let me just make this clear. Sanctions means no food or other valuable um, resources like oil are allowed to transport to countries like Niger, meaning you're starving innocent people in hope that they will somehow... Uh, it, the, the madness in sanctions is this. You just had a coup because the conditions were bad. Fine. And now you want to sanction them again so that they can coup again against this cool government does that even make sense then it makes sense that's why i think it's pressure from the western countries france and other pro west uh, other western countries like us i believe it's just pressure from those countries that that made ECOWAS impose those sanctions on them because it doesn't make sense for ECOWAS just to by their own decision to impose sanctions on their their neighboring countries yeah, I agree uh, on that one. So what do you think is the future of the Sahel? Um, there's a lot of issues going on there. M m many countries, Chad has um, civil unrest. We have, uh, of course, Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali with their issues. We have Nigeria with Boko Haram over there in the north, a uh, terrorist group that's linked to Al-Qaeda and all sorts of Islamic extremist groups. Uh, we have obviously even Sudan having a civil war at the other extreme end of, of that whole belt. Do you think there's hope in stability in the Sahel? I think there is, but it's going to take a long time. And that will depend with the efforts of the countries to, in, in managing the issues and trying to have a discussion and negotiation and, and, and support too from other countries, uh, other Western countries to in terms of finance and aid, but not interfere in terms of political things. I believe there is still hope a little bit 
things are going to get better because the people are suffering. So they are always going to want the best for themselves, right? If you are in Niger or Burkina Faso or Chad and things are going really wrong, you would want your country to get better, right? Yeah. I believe eventually it's going to get better. But you know, with these countries, uh, there is an issue here. Um, usually we are very anti-French in Africa uh, because of post-colonialism. Uh, there's something called the CFA, yeah. uh, Frank, which is the currency that they create, control, manage and distribute. And for several countries, I believe it's 14 countries. In, I don't know. There's several countries in Africa that the CFA controls. It's about 14. Right. So if that's the case, now I get it from Pan-Africanism, this is colonialism, but if you look at the development of countries like Kenya, um, Uganda, etc., all these countries have had foreign direct investment that led to our creation of Safaricom, which is our telecommunications network, which led to the creation of all these companies that allowed us to reach the next modernity, uh, including, um, you know, uh, the cables that run under the sea to give us fiber optic internet connection. All these things were pioneered by Western companies. In the UK, for example, Vodafone owns shares in uh, Safaricom. So without foreign direct investment coming into Africa, uh, we would have taken much longer until the Chinese came in in order for us to have uh, developed, right? So the question is, can we really hate France that much if France is the only country in, in, in these West African countries, Sahel specifically, actually even doing the bare minimum of creating some kind of, um, you know, trade. We cannot hit them much, but the thing is, I believe the people as uh, Fran pe the people believe France took more than they actually left for the, the countries to benefit. So that's the main issue they have with France. They believe they took their mineral, they benefited more from their resources than the actual countries. That's the only thing I believe. But otherwise, I think they, they have helped a little bit, but there is still a lot of, I believe, a little bit of neocolonialism in terms of their benefit. They are, they are, they are there just to benefit more than us. Yeah, but that, that's granted though, as in we should, be, yeah. we should be smart enough to not get outplayed by France. I believe that's why the countries ousted out their leaders because the leaders were not making the right choices for them. I agree. So that's too. why they, the only solution for them maybe was just a military takeover to end the, the repercussions of the previous democratically elected leader.